So we're just back at this commercial conversion. We're pretty close to start on the works. Before we do that, we need to nail where these drains are gonna go. In these older properties, your guess is as good as mine. So we're just um, back at the pub project because we want to get started on the works, but we've had to make a few amendments. Uh, but before we do anything, we have to suss out the drains. And the problem when you're converting an old building like this into like several flats is when you, and you put the new bathrooms in, is where do the drains go? And we could have had a drain survey done, but to be honest with you, it's easier just if we come and do it ourselves just to see where they're all going. Now we think we've nailed it, but the problem is the height of the drains. We're just going to flush these, and one of my guys is outside just to double check that they run into that. So, is that the one, Ozzy? I flushed both toilets. Yeah, the men's one. Did they did they come through? Yeah. So what we're doing is I just flush the old women's toilets and they do go into that drain which is great because that's what that's the drain that we've got to connect on to and where the men's toilets are at the moment we're actually going to bring the new bathroom for the flat upstairs and the new bathroom um, down here which will connect on through but we just need to make sure these run to the same drain so that's what we're doing now. This is the sexy part of being a property developer. Flushing toilets and checking where drains go. If ever in doubt, flush it twice. So one of the um, big issues when you're looking to convert an old property into multiple flats or a commercial conversion is how do you get them enough bathrooms in and where do you connect onto the drains? Now this is locally listed. We've also got, that means we've got some restrictions on where we put the drain lines. So instead of getting a drain survey done, which to be honest with you, aren't even worth the paper they're printed on, I find it much better just to come here with your builders, with your set of drawings, start flushing toilets, start popping manholes up, just so you can nail which drain run goes where. The other issue we've got is finding the right drain run is all well and good and gunning up to connect onto it is all well and good. But the height of that drain is a concern. If that's not deep enough in the ground, we won't be able to get the fall to connect onto it. Now normally you'd think that would be six foot, but I thought it's only gonna be about four foot because it connects on, we think, to the drains of this newer block, which is much lower than where we are. It's gotta be three, four foot lower. So there's no way that could be six foot and get a fall to connect onto that drain. So we're gonna pop it up and have a look. But which way are they fall in that way? That way, yeah. Oh, so they're not connected no, onto no, that? No, 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 no. But that's, no. that's not six foot, that's not deep enough, is it? That's four foot. Yeah, but that's not going to be deep enough to bring that drain at the no. back no. and run and connect onto that. That's... So Dan is filming me filming the drain. So what it is, is I'm filming this because Ozzy's going to flush the ones that he thinks and he's going to see which one way they come in. But which one was the first one you flushed, Ozzy? Okay, so that's the last angle one. Which was the second one you flushed? One what, the men's toilet? Yeah. So when we were here last, just sussing out the uh, drawings and how we're gonna make it work, the architect had drawn some things that weren't, I suppose, commercially viable. So they were talking about taking chimney breasts out to make rooms bigger and moving bathrooms. So when we were here last, just sussing out the uh, drawings and how we're gonna make it work, the architect had drawn some things that weren't, I suppose, commercially viable. So they were talking about taking chimney breasts out to make rooms bigger and moving bathrooms. And one of the things I didn't like is this old kitchen is gonna become um, a bedroom with an ensuite. And effectively, we've got two sort of cupboards here which were gonna be knocked down, and there's a chimney breast in the middle, in that middle wall, which was gonna be knocked down, so you have to put RSJs and get rid of the chimney stand and all that jazz, just to move an ensuite over here and create another cupboard, so to speak. So I said, well, bin that ensuite, put an ensuite in this right-hand cupboard, which is effectively a store cupboard, block the door up here for what is effectively the boiler room for the whole property, or we'll make it the boiler room for this flat, and we'll put an external door on it so we don't have to change the height because the floor height is like two foot lower than it is here. So it was a huge amount of work just to create a bedroom with an ensuite where effectively we can do it without knocking the walls down. 
So, yeah, I've changed the upstairs so we don't have too much messing around. So basically keeping it as it is at the minute, but just add it in the bathroom yeah. and put the ensuite in that cupboard. Yeah. So that bedroom is just what opened up there. And there. Hey, push through this da da Yeah. So there's no chimney breast to remove here. Yeah. No chimney breast to remove there. And no chimney breast to remove there. What about this floors now? Are you you okay that what? No, that floor is level. Yeah. That one we don't have floor. to do. You don't have to. Because he's saying we've got an external door, so we can leave it and leave it as a boiler room. Yeah, right. I don't know. I won't be on doing this. Oh, yeah. So there's two, there's two drains next to each other, so, and you have to know which one is the rainwater, which one is the soil. I guess we were guessing a little bit, but we've got, popped the right one. This has got to be four and a half, five foot deep, and different different direction of drains nothing connects from that other one we popped up so hopefully when Aussie now flushes the men's toilet it's going to run to one of these two sections here and if it's the middle section it means that the soil drain goes through the property which is ideal really so Aussie's just waved at me that he's flushed the toilet in the men's and nothing has come through so this isn't the one, so we've got to pop some more, which is going to be fun. I flush a double time, is that female one? They both come in there, you say? No, one was here, yeah. one, but more water here. Why would they have two separate drains next to each other? I don't know. Do the male one. I reckon, Aussie, the male one, if that's coming here, that's taken a little while to get here, yeah. Yeah, I never normally bother with any of this. I leave it to those guys. Um, but because this is such a unique project, we really should have got a drain survey. But I knew doing it with them together, we would nail it. And normally, Steve is here as well to help pop up the drains, but he's not. But yeah, we're going to save quite a bit of money not having a drain survey. But when you do all of this, you, know, you do sort of get a start, head start on the project. Just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense why we'd have two soil drains, different heights next to each other. Where's the I'm the pain. So good news on the drains, they don't run into the new development and the heights are pretty manageable, meaning we can connect onto them with ease. One of the tweaks that we did upstairs in the flat by just adding an ensuite into an existing bedroom means that we can connect onto the existing men's drains, which we now know runs to the front of the property.